you just look do a look up AI of IJ and then <coughs> so that is uh, very trivially if you do it's order of n cube if you use a little bit of dynamic programming it's order of n square but we'll be covering something which would be better than that so this is a very uh, useful technique that we'll be using in here uh, the, it, it is used at several other places you will be seeing a similar technique in strings class so better make a note of this so what we do is uh, that we we store the minimum so we have we are first doing some kind of pre-processing so that later on when we uh, report the answer for a query it is done in a very quick time so what we'll do in uh, pre-processing is that we will store the minimum for every index i to i plus 2 pi j other index which is greater than the size of the array so we will first calculate that I will tell you how to calculate that and then later on I will tell you how to answer the query ok so how do we calculate it let's say I am trying to calculate the answer for i to i plus 2 pi j And before that, I have already calculated all the answers for any i dash to i dash plus 2 pi j dash where j dash is less than j. Let's say I have done that already. We will see how we will proceed in coding. If I had done that already, so I have already computed answers for all powers of 2 which are less than j. If I have done that, then this could very well be broken down into so if I want if I want the answer for this section I can break it in, uh, down into two halves this half would be i to i plus 2 pi j minus 1 and this part would be i plus 2 pi j minus 1 to i plus 2 pi j both of these sections have length 2 pi j minus 1 we have already calculated answer for that so we can take answer from here let's say this is m1 we can take answer from here this, but let's say this is m2 so my answer for this would be minimum of m1 m2 so first we will take a loop of j first we will take a loop of j which will be from 0 to log n this is j the power that I, that I mentioned i to i plus 2 power j this power this power can never take a value more than log n because if it, it takes a greater value then this 2 pi j part exceeds n so the power bound on j is log n this is clear now what I do is for every i which goes from 0 to n n minus 2 pi j this makes sense I'll read it out you take a loop on j which is the power of 2 and then you take a loop on i so so because you need to store the value for every uh, answer for every i to i plus 2 pi j minus 1 and then you update the answer for i plus i i plus i to i plus 2 pi j which would be equal to we can break it into two halves as i told you earlier you can take the minimum for i plus i to i plus 2 pi j minus 1 and you can take the minimum for i plus 2 pi j minus, minus 1 to i i to uh, i plus 2 pi j so this would be let's say my min of i j stores the minimum for i to i plus 2 pi j then this would be equivalent to this statement which is m of i j is equal to min of m of i j minus 1 comma m of i plus 2 pi j minus 1 j minus 1 so what I mean to say is let's say m of ij denotes the minimum that occurs in ARR of i to i plus 2 pi j this notation is clear right let's say this array denotes the minimum that is that occurs in i say i plus 2 pi j this notation is clear right ok so how do we calculate it we take a loop on j uh, first of all note that m of i 0 would be equal to i well this is the pseudocode for the for this problem the key idea being that 
or Gaurav? What are the key idea being that whenever you are solving for an interval, you can break it into two halves since you are considering only powers of two. Those two halves would also be the length of those two halves would also be a power of two since you are dividing only by two, and you would already have the answer for that using your earlier cal calculations. So you can reuse that to get to do this pre-processing in order of n log n. Where does log n come from? J can take maximum value of log n. So the size of this array would be n into log n, and you can compute this array in n log n. Does this make any sense? It does, right? Okay. So once you have this array, let's say I'm given a query, uh, get me the minimum from for i comma j. So let's say I'm given a query that get me the minimum from i to j. So what I do is. First of all, I find out what is the length of this interval. Let's say the length of this interval is L. So I find out the uh, power of 2 which is just less than or equal to L. Let's say that power is K. So what I do is, I take the minimum of I to I plus 2 power K and I take the minimum of J minus 2 power K to J. So the minimum of this interval oh. Sorry. So minimum of this interval and the minimum of this interval. So once I take the minimum, I will get the minimum for this whole interval. Does this make sense? Yeah. So this query gets done in order of 1. Log L, log L is an operation in mat.h in C. It does not take log time. I am saying, let's say, the length is j minus i plus 1. So my k would be integer part of this log to the base 2. It's a function in uh, mat.h. It does not take log time. It is a constant. It is of constant order. This means just assign this value based on that. So basically, if you check which one of these is minimum and uh, assign the coordinate according to that. So you just you have to compare two elements, right? You can do that in order of one. So if we define it as uh, i to i plus two pi j, where j is not included, then this becomes as i, right? Okay. Uh, we'll come on to a similar prob a problem which would which would can be solved using RFQ. So this is a very standard problem. LCA, uh, also known as lowest common ancestor. The problem, what the problem says is that you are given a tree. Again, the tree is given. You can do any amount of pre-processing you want. Now, you will get several queries of the form. You will get two nodes, and you will have to report the least common ancestor of those nodes. So, what is least common ancestor? So, for these two nodes, yeah. this, this, and this are the common ancestors. So these two nodes, u and v, this is node u, this is node v, these nodes are the ancestors for u, this, these nodes are the ancestors for v. The common ancestors are this, this and this. So the node which is farthest from uh, root and a common ancestor is known as least common ancestor. So in this case, this one would be the least common ancestor. So the query asks you is that Given A and B, you have to report LCA for those two nodes. Again, we would ideally want that you do it this in order 1. You answer the query in order 1. Do any amount of pre-processing you want. Uh, more ideally, do as less pre-processing uh, as possible. So, we'll first tell you a method of reducing this into RMQ. So, one very neat way would be that, so what we do is that given a tree, let's say this is my tree. So I'll do it, uh, let, let me label it as well. Let's say this is A.
So what I do is, uh, now it's hard to explain when you don't know the Euler tool. <laughs> Anyhow, so what I do is, I try to do a traversal of the tree, so that each nodes are, uh, are uh, visited in a single traversal, and every uh, every transition that you do is from one part. If you do a transition from A to B, then there's a direct edge between A and B. So something like, if you can move to the next slide, I can show it in that. Yeah. So one of the traversal is shown for that, that thing. You go from zero to one. Then 1 to 2, you come back to 1. Then you go from 1 to 3, you come back to 1. Then you come, since no, no node is left now here, so you go back to 0. You come to 4, no node is left, so you go back to 0. So doing something like DFS. You guys are aware of, are aware what DFS is, right? Yes. Good. So basically what you do is, you do a DFS in the tree, and each node that you are visiting every time, you just note down that node. So like in this case, you started with the root, so you write down 0. You go to the leftmost subtree, so you note down 1. From 1, you go to 2, you note down 2. Then you come back again to 1, so you again uh, note down 1. Then 3 and then 1. You get the idea, right? You're doing a DFS and noting down each node number. So this is actually, uh, if you notice, we are... Uh, Covering each, okay. This is actually the Euler tool, but anyhow. So once you do that, we'll write these values into an array. Uh, let's say this E is the array. We'll create a corresponding array L, where L is the level number of each node. Level number means depth. So the depth of this node is zero. Depth of no this node is one. Depth of this node is two, and likewise. So this way we have noted it down. Uh, and R kya tha? And yeah, R is the index of first occurrence of the node I in the array. So like 0 occurred at index 0. 1 first occurred at 1, this occurred at 2, things like that. So we can do this in order n, right? Now if you notice, that if I am trying to query for uh, least common ancestor for two nodes, let's say 6 and 9 or uh, let's take a more complex query 8 and 6, fine 8 and 6 so let's say I am trying to find out the common ancestor for 8 and 6 uh, all the basically the uh, common ancestor would come in the traversal between uh, 6 and 8 this is a property that you can notice easily. So what you can do is, you can do an RMQ query between the first occurrence of 6 and first occurrence of 8 in this array. So the RMQ query will give you the uh, least level number, which in this case would be 1. It will actually give you the index and you can remap the index to the node number. Now by the property of DFS, what I am trying to say here is that by the property of DFS, if you are trying to find out the least common ancestor of uh, some node i and some node j, then the least common ancestor would occur in the DFS traversal between these two nodes occurrence in this array. This is a property, you can self-explore it. So since that happens, if you notice all the nodes which are visited between 6 and 8, the least common ancestor would have the least level number. That is alright. The least common ancestor will have least level number. So if I know what, what is the index of 6 here and what is the index of 8 here, I can just look up the least level number between these two indices. right? If I do that, I will get the level number of the least common ancestor, that is the LCA. Is that part clear? So, and I will also get the index here. Once I get the index here, the corresponding index in array E will tell me the node number. 